the tuning fork has been around for about 300 years. And as the name would suggest, it was originally used to tune musical instruments as, a, as an orchestra standard. But in the 19th century, it was developed into far more and actually became one of the most precise instruments in all of physics. It was used as musical standards, uh, but it was also used as vibration standards. It was used for timing. Uh, for example, some of Michelson's early experiments on the speed of light were, were based on timing of tuning forks. And it was also used as a tone generator. There not being electroacoustics at that time. Tuning forks were the most reliable source of, of standardized vibrations. And large collections of tuning forks were made in the 19th century for laboratory use. Perhaps the largest and most impressive of these is the grand tonometer in the Smithsonian's Physical Sciences collection. A collection of over 600 tuning forks spanning essentially the range of human hearing at four and eight wavelength intervals. It's the shape of a tuning fork that makes it so useful. Essentially, a tuning fork has to have two tines, two arms, that are identical in dimension, particularly in length, but also identical in mass. And when you strike a tuning fork, the energy is conveyed from the tine that you strike to the bottom and to the tine on the other side. This means that the tines are actually vibrating against each other. They don't touch, but the, the waves they produce between them actually cancel themselves out. And you can hear this when you strike a tuning fork and then pass it in front of a microphone. So the places where the sound is getting softer corresponds to when I place this dead zone in front of the microphone. The actual tone produced by a tuning fork depends primarily on the length of the tines, but also on the mass. And that's why there are some tuning forks that actually have adjustable weights, and these can produce multiple tones. They're generally not as precise, but they're much more versatile. The fact that a tuning fork vibrates up and down is also useful. You can see that sound can be conveyed through the bottom of the tuning fork as well, the table here acting as a resonator. This fact is used in medical tuning forks, which conveniently have a place to hold them. And when you strike them, then you can place the, the base on the cranium and give a, uh, a fairly quick and fairly reliable test of the inner ear. The sounds produced by tuning forks can also be combined. Um, they can be combined harmoniously as in musical harmonies, or they can be combined in a more destructive way in the production of beats. In the early 20th century, instruments like these were replaced and made obsolete by the development of electrical acoustics and electrical technologies. They survive today as witnesses to another time and another approach to the science of acoustics.